Hello, isopod fans. This is Wally with Supreme Gecko, Supreme Isopods, and you're in for a treat. 2022. We haven't done this for a couple of years, but we're starting up the isopod setup review once again with our very first one for 2022. Join us. If you remember, a couple of years ago, we did isopod setup reviews. We did 18 of them. This was so helpful for people that were just starting out keeping isopods. It was also helpful for people that watched these videos and got so many pointers. I got so many great comments from everybody that I started to think about maybe getting this whole isopod setup review going once again. And that's what we're doing today. Now, I mentioned that we're going to be taking just a handful of submissions for these isopod setup reviews. I mentioned that about a week ago, and we already have three submissions. So if you're interested in submitting your isopod setup for review, what you can do is give me, send me a one-minute video, about one minute, and include the following information. I'm going to put this down in the description so you can include this in your isopod setup review. What you want to include is what isopods you're working with, how long you've kept them, any issues or concerns that you're having with your isopod setups. Are you having babies? Are you getting babies from your isopods? Let me know the enclosure side. Let me know the ventilation, both on the top and the sides of the enclosure. What substrate are you using? This is very important. What's the composition of your substrate? How deep is your substrate? Do you have a damp side? And if you do, how do you water your enclosure? How often do you feed and what are you feeding? What's your schedule for feeding? How often are you adding water and can you show me how damp your substrate is? And finally, are you using calcium and what type of calcium are you using? Now, I mentioned that I'm only taking a few submissions for the isopod setup review. If you miss out on your submissions, you can always contact me through Buy Me A Coffee. I'm going to sh throw the link down in the very first comment and you can set up a buy me a coffee session for us to review your isopod setup. Now you can do this also if you just want your setup privately reviewed. And before we get into that review, let me mention real quick, what I'd like you to do for this review is to watch the review, take notes yourself, and tell me what you think can be improved in this setup. And I'm going to pause the video for just a moment so that you can go down in the comments down below and write what you think can be improved in the setup at the end of the review. So stay tuned for that. And also by the end of the review, I'm going to share my favorite isopod setup review so far. So stick around for that. Let's get into this review. Now we're going to be looking at an isopod setup submitted by Renee, and this is Porcelio Hoffman Segai Black. Let's take a look. Let's start this up. Hi, Wally. Uh... Thanks for bringing back the isopod enclosure review. These are Purcellio Hoffman Sega isopods. I've had them for about a month to a month and a half. I'm going to stop it right there. So this is an important point. Uh, Renee has had these isopods for about a month, month and a half. So it's really not a whole lot of time. It's not enough time to really expect to get babies. And a lot of people expect that once they get isopods, they should be getting babies right away. So just wanted to point that out. Let's go ahead and jump back into that, the uh, setup. They seem to be slowly dying off and not producing any babies. So I was hoping. Well, that's really discouraging. If they're dying off, that's a big, big problem. So the issue today is that they're dying off, not that they're not having babies. Let's get back into the review you could tell me why that might be. The enclosure is a 10 gallon tank. For ventilation, there's this screen lid, which I've covered part of with aluminum foil. The substrate is- So I'm going to stop it right there. We're talking about the size of the enclosure and this is a unique enclosure in that it's a 10 gallon. A lot of uh, keepers keep their isopods in plastic bins, six quart, 27 quarts, 15 quart, it doesn't really matter. This is a 10. This is really cool because Renee can actually see those isopods. And that's really neat. <clears throat> the ventilation 
as a full top ventilation. I'm a little tiny bit concerned that there's not really a good cross ventilation, but that's that whole top being almost the whole top being exposed and allowing ventilation is a really, really good thing. So let's get back into it. Bio dude, dude terra firma, and it's a couple inches deep. So here's another point that you have to cover in your reviews if you're submitting one. The substrate is the bio dude and it's the terra firma. Now I've taken a look at this substrate and let me go ahead and throw it up on the screen right now and let's talk about it just briefly. Let's go ahead and take a look at the ingredients in this terra firma from bio dude. Now there's a lot of really good things going on with this substrate, especially the sphagnum moss and the substrate itself. There's a couple of question marks that I have and it seems like there's more some of these ingredients are used more as fillers like the palm bark the six quarts of bark the uh, quart of bio shot I think that that's probably a stimulant uh, some type of a, a bacteria that helps the bioactive uh, process get going but I don't see anything major here uh, the oak the leaves are oak leaves and we're going to see those leaves in just a second. So for hydration, um, I've got this moss side, which is damp. And I've got leaves throughout the rest of the enclosure. So you can see the damp area with the sphagnum moss. It appears to be damp. It looks good so far. You can see the leaves right there. Those look like live oak leaves rather than a hardwood leaf type of maple or oak or, or some other hardwood. Let's keep going. Here they are. You can see I only have a few. So we're only seeing four here. There might be a couple more down in the leaf litter, uh, but that's kind of a concern. And take a look at the size. Let me know what you think about the size of these isopods. Let's keep going. It was a colony of 10 to start. At, uh, so twice a week I take care of them. They get some combination of extreme nano fish food, this oyster shell powder, cleanup crew cruzane, this uh, nutritional brewer's yeast. Um, so everything looks really good there. A lot of people use the fish food. That looks like a color enhancing fish food. I don't know. I've not used that. I'm not sure if that's okay or not. A lot of other good products. The brewer's yeast is more for the isopods than it is really for the, the I'm sorry, for the springtails rather than the isopods, but the isopods will eat it as well. As long as you don't overdo it with the brewer's yeast. Let's keep going. There's the food dish there, the shell. I water. I want to mention, I really don't use food dishes. It, it's okay if you do. It keeps it off the substrate. I always feed on the dry side. This is kind of a, a tip more than it is a review issue. I keep my food right. I feed it right onto the substrate and I put it on the dry side. If you find that your food is molding up and you have to put it in a um, feeding dish, then there's maybe some other issues going on there. Let's keep going. Bye. Pouring a little bit of water along the side of this moss. Thanks so much. I hope you can get to mine. So we've had a chance to take a look at this isopod setup. 10 gallon, looks like there's ventilation, looks like there's a, a damp side, a dry side, leaves, cork bark. What do you all think? I'm going to pause it right now, the video, so that you can put a comment down below. What do you think? might be the issue. I'm going to go ahead and give you a little bit of time while I talk about a really cool tip about Hoffman Sagai. What I found is that they, they are very territorial. Moms will guard their babies in a certain area of the enclosure. Keep putting that comment in. So what I do is I put a lot of little hiding spots. And this is okay to start off a colony to have one piece of cork bark. What I like to do is take egg cartons um, the cardboard egg cartons and split them off into two or three different compartments, two or three different egg pieces, and put that in the enclosure as well. So that if a, a mother isopod, Hoffman Segai, wants a little territory, they can take one of those egg cartons and use it for raising their babies. Did you finish up your comment? Okay, let's get into the actual review and take a look at this. 
and let's see if it matches up what you think might be an issue with this enclosure. I'm going to tell you, I don't see any major issues whatsoever. Nothing that tells me that within a month or month and a half that the isopod should be perishing. I see the, the ventilation, the tank, everything looks good. The damp area looks good. The food looks okay. Everything is going good so far. The leaves, now those live uh, oak leaves, I think are great, but they're used for a longer period of time. They decompose a little bit slower because they're a harder leaf. I really like to include those with real maple leaves or oak leaves, some kind of a hardwood type of a leaf so that the isopods eat the other leaves, the normal leaves, and then will uh, chew on the live oak leaves as a secondary food source. But that's a really minor issue. I don't think that that's what's causing these isopods to die. Overall, in my scale of isopod setup reviews, where green is great, yellow means something needs to be changed for them to have babies or not die, and red means that this culture is going to die eventually because something's really, really not right. I would give this setup a green. So now you're asking, why are the isopods dying? Well, you've had them for a month, month and a half. Take a look at the size of these isopods. Those are adult isopods. They're mature. I don't know how old they are. We don't know how old they are. They are. Only the breeder knows how old these are. When I send out isopods, when we put isopods on our tables uh, for reptile shows, we always include not newborn isopods, but isopods that are usually about a couple, three, four months old. We never ever include adult isopods when we ship out any isopods or we put isopods on, on the table for reptile shows. And that's because we don't know how much longer they have to live. Isopods have a very short lifespan. And, and I'm not saying that this is an intentional situation where older isopods are being sent out. We just don't know how old they are. So it could be within realm that these are older isopods and they're just naturally dying. The shipping process takes a lot of stress out of isopods and, and introducing them to a new enclosure adds some stress to the isopods as well. So again, we're not sure how old those isopods are. They possibly could be dying just because they're at the end of their lifespans. Don't know for sure, but that's the only thing that I can see as an issue in this whole situation. And again, that's just a guess that I'm making because this setup looks really, really good. You're doing a great job. Now, the only other question that I would have is what are the temperatures that these are kept at? If they're normal room temperatures, you, they should be fine. If they're exposed to too cold or too hot of an area, that could be the problem, but I'm assuming that that's not it. Hey, I spy keepers, how did you do? Did you leave a comment down below and did you nail it? This was a tough one, I'm telling you, because this enclosure looks really, really good. Again, if you have an isopod setup that you want me to review, send me a link to a video that you've done on YouTube. Send me the video on my email address or on Facebook. Keep it about a minute or so. Include the items that I list down in the description, and I'll review your setup. Hey, do you want to see a really unique setup review? Make sure that you watch this video right here because it's a bunch of fun. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next review.